Okay, hello everyone. Once again, welcome to the series of uh, biochemistry uh, lecture presentation. This time we will look into the cyclic formation of monosaccharides. Alright, so in this particular video, we will see how um, monosaccharides, particularly the open chain form, is converted into a cyclic form. What we can see in this um, slide is three pictures and it, uh, it means the same. Okay? This picture um, shows the different um, conformation or projection of a glucose. So here we have what we call a fissure fissure projection okay wherein the the atoms the carbon atoms are arranged in a straight or linear uh, form okay and then we have here the Hayward okay H A W O R T H Hayward projection Okay, and this is fissure projection. This is what we call a um, chair, chair conformation. Okay, so still there are in the chair conformation, we can see here uh, six carbon atom. So being one, two, three, four, five, and then this is the sixth carbon. Okay. In the Howard projection, Hayward projection, this carbon being one, two, three, four, five, and six. So our objective or our goal today is to be able to uh, convert the fissure into Hayward because uh, most often in the in aqueous solution this what um, this what appears this is what exists the the hayward projection okay so okay so in this uh, slide we will see how the fissure projection is converted or transformed into hayward projection so let's begin by uh, dealing with by looking at this um, fissure projection. Okay, so what we have to do is to plif the molecule, okay, um, that direction clockwise. So what happens is, as you notice, the pith carbon, okay, will be uh, right here, okay, and above, uh, above carbon number five, that's where the carbon number six is and then the carbon number four is right here three two and one okay so you notice that as a uh, as the molecule rotates the carbon number one which is the aldehyde now goes goes uh, goes down okay so the oxygen here on the the oxygen atom on the fifth carbon, remember this is the OH, okay, and this is the OH, okay, on the fifth carbon. Um, the OH or the, elect the electron on the oxygen atom attacks this carbon in carbon number one, okay, represented by this arrow. So the electron or the oxygen atom um, attacks the carbon or the carbonyl group in carbon number one so there will be a bond there will be a bond that will be formed between the oxygen and the carbon number one okay so right here right here we can see the bond between the oxygen and the um, carbon number one okay so as, as this oxygen attacks the carbonyl group in carbon number one, we form what we call 
a hemi 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 acetal hemi acetal group okay and this uh, this carbon right here is the hemi acetal carbon okay the carbon number 1 is the hemi hemi acetal okay hemi acetal carbon this hemi acetal carbon is also known as a numeric okay it's also known as a numeric carbon all right now one thing that you have to notice is in the formation of cyclic there are two forms that will be produced it's either alpha form and the other one is beta form in the formation of hemiacetal group one possibility is one possibility is the hydroxyl or the oh in the anomeric carbon will point upward okay will point upward and that is what we call a beta form another possibility is okay when the OH on the hemiacetal carbon is pointing downward and that is what we call that is what we call an alpha form okay if the OH if the hydroxyl group um, points below that is an alpha but if the OH or the hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon or on the hemiacetal carbon points upward and that is a beta actually when uh, when um, the cyclization or the formation of cyclic cyclic uh, happens there's always there are always two of them that will be formed the alpha and the beta exist in equilibrium okay the alpha and the beta exist in equilibrium in aqueous solution it's the beta form that predominates okay so when equilibrium is established more beta is present than the alpha okay so again so you just have to remember that an alpha form is when the OH or the hydroxyl group on carbon number one is pointing downward that's alpha if it is pointing upward okay outward the plane then that is considered as beta form all right so after the cyclization has finished you notice the numbering of the carbon atoms okay the carbon number one if the oh points downward as we have said that is an alpha form okay now notice that on carbon number two on carbon number two in the ring the oh is pointing downward okay now um, on carbon number three we notice that it points upward inside the ring and the oh on carbon number four is pointing downward outside the ring so how do we how do we put those oh oh from carbon two carbon three and carbon number four in the ring okay so remember this uh this um rule if it is left side if the oh is at the left side of the fissure projection you put that um up okay on the ring okay if the oh on the fissure projection is at the right side then you draw the oh you write the oh below the ring that's why on carbon number two 
Okay, notice here, the OH on carbon number 2 is at the right side. So, we, where do we put the OH on the ring? Right down. Okay, the OH on carbon number 3 in the fissure is at the left. Where do we put that? Left, up. That's why here, the OH on carbon 3 is upward inside the ring. Carbon number 4. The OH on the fissure projection is at the right side. So we put that downward outside the ring. Okay. Notice that on carbon number 5, we have OH here in the fissure projection. But in the Hayward projection, there will be none. Because remember, the OH here, okay, um, reacted in the formation of cyclic okay so remember that this this oxygen here this oxygen here this is part of carbon number five okay this oxygen here is part of carbon number five all right and um, remember this is our anomeric carbon or the hemiacetal carbon so this rule left left up, right down, okay, rule, is only applicable to OH on carbon number 3, carbon number 2, carbon number 3, and carbon number 4, okay? But the alpha and beta designation only applies to the OH position on the anomeric carbon or the carbon number one okay so again here are the two anomers the alpha and the beta they are called anomers alpha anomer and beta anomer so as i said earlier we we designate as beta anomer if the oh only if the O8 is only on carbon number one, which the anomeric carbon points up. If the O8 is on carbon number one or anomeric carbon points down alpha. Okay? So that's the those are the designation. But the left, left, up, and the right down designation, as I said earlier, it only applies to car to the O8 on carbon. 2, 3, and carbon number 4. Okay? How about for the case of glu uh, galactose? Let me draw galactose. Okay? So this is our aldehyde group. And then carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, and carbon number 6. Okay? So this is... Uh, the O it's on carbon number two is right. Okay, on carbon number three is left. Carbon number four is also at the left side, and carbon number five, okay, at the right side. <clears throat> Let's put some H there. Excuse me. Okay, some O it's he H here also. Okay, remember that um, this is D. D galactose remember in my previous uh, presentation in the stere stereochemistry we locate the um, farthest chiral carbon from the functional group so this is the um, the highest numbered chiral carbon and if the oh is at the right side then the designation is d or dextro rotatory so this is D galactose. Okay. Now let's convert this into fissure projection. So this is our carbon number five. Okay. And then uh, write the carbon number six above carbon number five. Okay. So there's OH here, and carbon number four becomes or will be placed there. Carbon number three and carbon number two. And carbon number one is right here. 
So remember, there is a carbonyl group here. Okay. Okay, so as uh, we have seen earlier, this, this oxygen attacks the carbonyl group. All right. So eventually, let's draw another one. Okay, and this is the oxygen now. Let's write here the first carbon, the second carbon, the third carbon, the fifth carbon. Okay, uh, this is the fourth carbon, the third, and the fifth carbon is right here. Okay, remember this is the hemiacetal group, hemiacetal carbon, and the part of hemiacetal carbon is formation of OH on carbon number one or the hemiacetal carbon. Now we have OH uh, in carbon number one or hemiacetal carbon below, all right? And that is the designation of this molecule is alpha. Okay, let's write first alpha. Now where do we, where do we, uh, where do we put the OH on carbon number two? So this is carbon number two. What is our uh, rule earlier? Left, up, right, right down. The OH on carbon number two is at the right, so we put that below the ring. Okay? On carbon number three, the OH is at the left, so we put that up. Okay? And on carbon number four, the OH is also at the left side, so we put that above. Okay, we have no more space. At carbon number five, so remember there is no more OH here because the, o, the oxygen is now part of the bond here. So we don't put any more OH. We just simply put here um, hydrogen and then we put there CH2OH, which is the carbon number, carbon number six. Okay, so this is your uh, alpha form, so the name becomes alpha D because this is a dextrorotatory D galactose. Alpha D galactose. And the other form is, of course, the other form is beta form. Okay, if we put the OH above, well, the, the OH on carbon number 2 and carbon number uh Carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four are the same. Okay? Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? The position of OH on carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four do not change. Okay? In alpha and beta. Alright?